It is great to be back with all of you. Thank you for having me. So I'm going to share a little bit about how we're thinking about AI across Amazon. Uh, we have been using AI expansively across the company for the last 25 years. But the way that we think about technology, and this goes for AI as well, is that we're not using it because we think it's cool. We're using it because we're trying to solve customer problems. And that's why when we talk about AI, it's typically less to announce that we've beat the best world-class world chess player in the world, and more to allow you to have better recommendations and personalized recommendations in our retail business, or to equip our pickers and our fulfillment centers with the optimal pass so we can get items to you faster, or to put it in our prime air drones where we hope to deliver items to you in less than an hour in a couple of years, or for our just walk out technology in our Amazon Go stores, or to fuel Alexa, or to provide you the 25 plus AWS AI services so you can build great applications on top of our services. We prioritize technology that we think is going to really matter for customers. And with the explosion of generative AI the last couple of years, we've taken that same approach. There is a ton of innovation, but what we're trying to do is solve problems for you, what we think of as practical AI. And so what have we seen so far? The most success that we've seen from companies everywhere in the world is in cost avoidance and productivity. And you see lots of companies having uh, gains there, but you also are starting to see completely reimagined and reinvented customer experiences. And we see these same trends when we look at the applications that we're building inside of Amazon around generative AI. It's actually quite difficult to build a really good generative AI application. It's about, you know, you need a good model, but it's not just the model. In addition to the model, you have to have the right guardrails, and you have to have the right um, uh, fluency of the messaging, and you have to have the right UI, and you have to have the right latency, or it's a really slow, laggy experience, and you have to have the right cost structure. And I think a lot of times what happens as you build these apps is you, you use a great model, you do a little bit of work, and you think, I have a great generative AI app, and it turns out that you're really only about 70% of the way there. And the reality is, Customers don't take kindly to apps that have 30% wonkiness. And then the third thing I would say is that I have been surprised with all of the internal building inside of Amazon with the diversity of the models being used. We gave our builders freedom to pick what they want to do. And I figured that almost everybody would end up using Anthropic's Claude models because they're the very best performing models in the world, have been for the last year or so. And by the way, we have a lot of our internal builders using Claude. But they're also using Llama models, and they're also using Mistral models, and they're also using some of our own models, and they're also using homegrown models themselves. And so this kind of surprised us, but in some ways, as I think about it, it doesn't surprise us, because we keep learning the same lesson over and over and over again, which is that there is never going to be one tool to rule the world. It's not the case in databases. We've been talking about this for 10 years. People use lots of different relational databases or non-relational databases. It's not the case in analytics. You know, I remember six, seven years ago being on stage, and we were talking about how everybody thought the TensorFlow was going to be the one AI framework. And we kept saying, there are going to be a lot of them. And there were. And it turns out that PyTorch ended up being the most popular one. And the same is going to be true for models. And we see this internally. What we've noticed as we've been building all these applications is that our internal builders have been asking for all sorts of things from our teams that are building models. They want better latency. They want lower cost. They want the ability to do fine tuning. They want the ability to better uh, uh, orchestrate across their different knowledge bases to be able to ground their data. They want to take lots of automated orchestrated actions or what people call agentic behavior. They want a bunch, they want better image and video. They want a whole bunch of things. And we share that feedback with our model provider partners, and they're very receptive, but they're busy. I mean, <laughs> you guys want a lot. There's a lot to do. And so it's one of the reasons why we have continued to work on our own frontier models. And those frontier models have made a tremendous amount of progress over the last four to five months. And we figured if we were finding value out of them, you would probably find value out of them. So I'm excited to share and announce the launch of Amazon Nova, which are our new state-of-the-art foundation models that deliver frontier intelligence 
an industry leading price performance. So, in this intelligence set of models, there are four flavors. The first is micro, which is a text only model, which means you feed it text and it outputs text. It's laser fast, very cost effective, and our internal builders are really enjoying it for a lot of their simple tasks. And then we have three flavors of multimodal models. And so, multimodal models, you, imp you can input text or image or video, and you output text. And so, each of these are in ascending order of size and intelligence. The micro, light, and pro models are generally available today. The premier model will be available in the Q1 timeframe. So I'm going to share a few benchmarks. I'll just say that we used external um, published benchmarks whenever we could. And when they weren't available, we did it ourselves. We published the methodology on our website so you can try and replicate it if you like. So I'll just share some of the uh, benchmarks. So on the micro model, you can see it is a very competitive model. We uh, if you look at the raw numbers relative to the, the leading uh, models in this class, um, you know, Llama and Google's Gemini, on the, on the raw numbers, it's, uh, it, it benchmarks better on all the variables in, uh, versus Llama and 12 or 13 versus Gemini. But if you do statistical significance testing, which we did, we just took all the um, numbers that were overlapping uh, in the 90, 95% confidence interval, and we call those equal. So if you look at that way, which I will moving forward, you can see that we um, are equal or better on all the benchmarks compared to Llama and Gemini in, these, in this class of models. If I look at the light model, it's a very similar story, very competitive. If you compare Nova Light to OpenAI's GPT-40 Mini, you can see that we're equal or better on 17 of the 19 benchmarks, equal or better on 17 of the 21 benchmarks versus Gemini, and then equal or better on Haiku 3.5 on 10 of the 12 benchmarks. Haiku isn't doing uh, images or video yet, so we couldn't benchmark on as many dimensions. But again, a very competitive model. And then if you look at Pro, same story. Uh, if you compare it to um, GPT-40, it's equal or better on 17 of the 20 benchmarks, it's equal or better on 16 of the 21 benchmarks versus Gemini. The very best model in this class of models is Sonnet V2 3.5. But even here, you can see that our pro model is equal or better on about half of those. And on the ones that are not, it's very competitive. And you're going to like the cost and the latency characteristics here. And then our premier model, which will be our largest multimodal model, will be available in the Q1 timeframe. Now, so that's four very competitive, compelling intelligence models. But there are some other things that I think you're going to really like about these models. First, they're really cost effective. They're about 75% less expensive than the other leading models in Bedrock. Two, they are fast. They're the fastest models that you'll see with, res with respect to latency. We'll also um, uh, make the Nova models available in the SKU that uh, Peter was talking about last night in the late latency optimized inference SKU as well. They're very fast. And then they're not just integrated, they're just not in Bedrock, but they're integrated deeply with all the features in Bedrock that any model provider can use. It's just that this team took the time to do them. And so that means that you get fine tuning. Increasingly, a lot of our app builders for generative AI, they want to do fine tuning with labeled examples to make the applications perform better. You'll also be, um, the Nova models are also integrated with the distillation feature that Matt just talked about. So you can infuse intelligence of bigger models into smaller models that are more cost effective and lower latency. It's deeply integrated in Bedrock's knowledge basis so that you can use RAG to ground your answers in your own data. And then also, we have optimized these models to work with the proprietary systems and APIs so that you can actually do multiple orchestrated automatic steps, agentic behavior, much more easily with these models. So I think these are very compelling. I'm looking forward to getting, taking a shot at them and, and, and using them. Now, customers want to actually do more around generative AI than just with outputs that are text. They also have a lot of needs around images, 
around video. And there's lots of examples of it, but, but simple ones are advertising or marketing or trading materials. And so we've worked hard. You know, it's expensive. There aren't a lot of options out here. They're not easy to do yourself. And we've worked hard on this problem. And I'm excited to announce two more models for you. First is Amazon Nova Canvas, which is our state-of-the-art image generation model. And so Canvas, it it's, uh, allows you to input natural language text, get images back. And they're beautiful images. They're studio quality images. Um, it allows you to edit images using natural language or text inputs. It gives you controls for color scheme and layout. It has a number of built-in controls for responsible use of AI, including watermarking for traceability, as well as content moderation to limit the generation of harmful content. And we, we benchmarked this as well. We tried to benchmark it versus some of the other state-of-the-art um, players in this space. In this case, we picked um, you know, typically what people consider the two leaders here, which are um, you'll see Dolly 3 and Stable Diffusion 3.5. And we benchmarked on the two variables that matter most, which is image quality and instruction following. And you can see that Canvas outperforms both of them on both those dimensions. We also did a human evaluation where you saw similar types of results. So this is a compelling model. And then, of course, we also want to allow you to have it be easy to generate video. And so we're excited to announce the launch of Amazon Nova Real, which is our state-of-the-art video generation model. So again, with Real, it's studio quality video. It's, it's really stunning videos that you can create. It gives you full control of the camera, lets you have motion control, lets you do panning, it lets you do 360 degree rotation and zoom. It also has built-in um, AI controls um, for safe AI, including watermarking and content moderation. We'll launch it with the ability to do six-second videos, which works really well for a lot of marketing and advertising, on its way up to two-minute videos in the next few months. We benchmarked this as well. There aren't really many um, video generation services that have an API, and then none of them have automated benchmarks. So we just took one of the, uh, we benchmarked with human evaluation versus one of the leaders here in, in Runway. And you're going to see again that real benchmarks very favorably relative to others. So that's six new frontier models for you. What's going to be next for us in Nova? Well, the first thing is the team is going to be working really hard over the next year on the second generation of these models. But I also have a couple things that I thought I'd give you a sneak peek into. Um, the first is that in the Q1 timeframe, we anticipate giving you a speech-to-speech -speech model, which will allow you to input speech and get speech back very fluent, very fast. And then around mid-year, we're going to give you an any-to-any -any model. So this is really multimodal to multimodal. So, so you'll be able to input text, speech, images, or video, and output text, speech, images, and video. This is the future of how frontier models are going to be built and consumed. And we're really looking forward to giving this to you. So you may be asking yourself, how should I think about AWS's model strategy? They have very deep partnerships with a number of model providers. They have some of their own models now. And the way I would tell you to think about it is the way that we always provide you selection in everything we do, which is that we are going to give you the broadest and best functionality you can find anywhere. And what that's going to mean is it's going to mean choice. The reality is that all of you are going to use different models for different reasons at different times, which, by the way, is the way the real world works. Human beings don't go to one human being for expertise in every single area. You have different human beings who are great at different things. You're going to sometimes be optimizing for coding, sometimes for math, sometimes for uh, integration with RAG, sometimes for agentic needs, sometimes for lower latency, sometimes for cost, most of the time for some combination of these. And at AWS, 
we are going to give you the very best combination of all of these, as we always do. And we think we've added some pretty interesting models to the mix today, but the great thing is, is that all of these models are available for you in Bedrock, and you can use them in whatever combination you want, and you can experiment, and you can change over time, and we will give you that selection and that choice today as well as in the future. So with that, I will say, have at it, giddy up, and back to Matt. Thank you.